Hello, how are you? On behalf of Badminton Pan American Confederation, we welcome you to our Coach Corner program. My name is Adrián Gómez, and I am pleased to be the moderator today. Now, let's go to Kingston, Jamaica, to meet Mr. Vishu Tolan, president of Badminton Pan Am, who has an important message for us. Hi, Vishu, go ahead. Hi, Adrian, thank you so much. And just listening to you, I saw you were doing Spanish and French also. Was that French you were speaking? Wow. Hello, everyone, and welcome. Thank you for taking part in this new season of our Coach Corner program. This season is particularly interesting since its main topic will be doubles. Yes, doubles, not the food, but doubles in badminton. Mm. We hope you find the following webinars useful information you can apply in your day-to-day -day work as a coach. Many thanks to all the lecturers, the production team, translators, and moderators, and especially all of you, the coaches, who are the main pillars of the development of badminton. It is my true honor and privilege to officially declare the ninth season of our program, Boy, We Have Come Up Area, 109. Without further ado, let's begin our season with Howard Back from the USA, who is well known to many of us and will share the important topic today, doubles in badminton. Thank you all very much. Adrian, over to you. Thank you, Vishu, for your kind words. So let's get started with the very first program in this ninth season. In today's opening uh, session, we have the pleasure to welcome one of the most prominent coaches in our continent. I'm talking about uh, Coach Howard Bach from the United States, who's going to talk about a very interesting topic, doubles in badminton. Before leaving you with our guest, though, I'd like to tell you a little bit about our guest. Howard is a gold medalist He is a men doubles gold medalist, world champion 2005, World Cup 2005, Pan American Games 2011, 2007, and 2003. Good afternoon, Howard. Welcome to our Coach Corner program. Thank you for joining us and welcoming us to your home in California. Please share your screen. The floor is yours. Go ahead. Thank you. Hi, everybody. My name is Howard Bach, and I'm super excited today <clears throat> to be a part of this wonderful uh, webinar. But first and foremost, I would like to say thank you to each and every one of you that tuned in to take time out of your precious day to uh, tune into the Zoom session. I would also like to say thank you to Badminton Pan Am, Pan America, and BWF for allowing me this wonderful opportunity to share my knowledge and experiences both as a former player and now as a coach. Last but not least, obviously, a big thank you to my sponsors, Yonix and Synergy Badminton Academy uh, for supporting my competitive and coaching career every step of the way. <clears throat> a little bit of background about myself. I grew up in San Francisco, California in the United States, and I started playing badminton at the age of five years old. I was fortunate enough to join the National Training Center at the age of 16 in Colorado Springs. And I went on to compete and represent the US in three Olympics in 2004, Athens, 2008, Beijing, and 2012, London. Obviously my most memorable uh, achievement would be the 2005 World Championships where uh, I was the first American to capture the gold and was actually in Anaheim in, in the US too, on home turf. And after my retirement in 2013, I had the amazing opportunity to join uh, Synergy Badminton 
club. And as of now, I've been a full-time coach for about nearly 10 years. <clears throat> Excuse me. But uh, it's amazing to see junior players that I'm working with. Uh, they're playing international tournaments right now, and they're trying to uh, gather ranking points so they can qualify for the upcoming Olympics in uh, in Paris, France in 2024. So it's great to see. Uh, and I was also very fortunate enough to uh, be a part of the um, BWF's Level 1 and Level 2 Fast Track Course Certification, Coaching uh, Certification Course in Lima, in Peru, back in December of 2022. Okay, I'm going to share screen after this. So obviously the goal for today, I've seen a lot of videos from past participants. They share a wealth of knowledge, great videos uh, and tutorials. So what I wanted to do today for my goal is to share a different perspective, personal experience as a former player and now as a coach in the Pan Am region. I will share with everybody the key components that helped me become the best possible version of myself while I was competing. And I would also like to share thoughts on what I wish I had learned when I was younger, when I was a player, and what are some you know, key elements that I've currently uh, are implementing as a coach to help my players improve their games. I'm excited, so let's get started. Great, let me share screen. Great, so obviously we're talking about doubles, badminton, and here's a general outline of what we're gonna be covering. So, you know, former perspective of myself as a player, the key components, the four key components that helps, you know, help me become the best possible player. Obviously the, the lists are own your game, right? Do your homework being flexible on the court or in your game, and also to win with different types of weapons. We're gonna get into further detail shortly after the outline. And I would like to share current perspectives as a coach, right? The four components, obviously, that I you know, utilize on a daily basis. Obviously, evaluate, plan, deliver, and review. And also, I would like to share past knowledges and experiences as a former player, for instance, things I've thought of, which I wish I would have known or wish, you know, my coaches or uh, my coaches would have had that, you know, uh, opportunity to share that knowledge with me. Obviously, as a coach, I wish my, uh, you know, if, I, if I'm a player, I would wish my coach would have a better, clear understanding of the drills and explaining to me and sharing a clearer picture of my long and short-term goals and objectives. Setting clear objectives and goals so then I can set a target and evaluate along the way to see if I've actually met the target or you know if I am actually ahead of schedule or behind schedule. So these are all useful knowledges. And lastly, at the very end, I will show some videos. There are actually two drills, two basic doubles training drills with videos that I will share with everybody. So let's get started. So former player's perspective, own your game. Number one, to identify, understand your own individual strengths and improvements, right? What are your individual or your team strengths when you're on the court? What are your individual or team improvements? I don't want to use the word weakness, usually it's really just a matter of improvement, whether if you're ready or you're not ready. So no one's necessarily weak on the court, you know, so they tend to play more on one side than the other. So if you play more towards your strength, then you'll have a tendency to hide more of your weakness, right? So I tend to see it as more of an improvement. And what is the one trademark or special strength that you have, a shot or a skill on the court that differentiates you from other players. So you need to understand and know these particular questions about yourself, about your game to help you further improve as quickly as possible. Okay, former player's perspective. Okay. Do your homework. What does that mean? Watch a lot of videos, study your opponents, right? 
who is currently winning? If we're talking doubles, okay, who is currently number one in women's doubles and mixed doubles and men's doubles? What are the reasons why they are winning and dominating at every tournament? What types of weapons are they using successfully to, to win against their opponents? What particular play style are they using this particular style more? Which particular style are they best fitted to utilize on the court against a particular team? What types of playing styles, right, the pair is using to win? So these are all great questions when you study the, uh, the current list of champions. Even if you're the one that's winning, we always have room for improvement. Just because you're winning, there's always room to become better, become more efficient on the court. Number three, being flexible, right? And adapt to changes because, you know, change happen every day in life as well as on the badminton courts. And that's actually a great picture of Bay Win stretching. Uh, so if your opponent, for instance, if your opponent is scoring against you at the front net, okay, let's say we're playing doubles, we're losing at the net. What are the uh, possible counters, right? Ways to kind of change that. So for instance, should we try to put more pressure on our shots to give your opponents less time to react so then they cannot hit a good quality shot to hurt us on the court or at the front court? Uh, or should we play or move our birds to the back court more so then we're trying to move them towards the middle and back of the court? Or do we try to block past the service line so then that way they don't get too close to the net? So these are you know, different types of adaptations and being flexible in the court with your game. That'll help you become successful. And another example would be if you're if you're utilizing your offense strategy, you're attacking, but it's actually not working today. Your opponent's waiting for your offense, or your opponent's defense is really strong today. They're not making a lot of mistakes. Perhaps playing rally, just moving them from corners to corners, front back, utilizing the four corners, or simply play some defense to try to score instead of forcing your way with the offense strategy. So being flexible with all of these aspects will help your game. Okay, to win with multiple weapons. And I've, I'm sure there's a lot more of styles, but I'll just list the four. But the typical style that many players like to play that are the most simple, simplistic, straightforward, would be the front back formation, which is the offense formation or style where opportunities are created and shots are being hit from an uh, angle, you know, from a steep angle or speed or power position, usually from the top hitting downwards. So when you're in a good position, you tend to want to play offense, right? The second style, obviously, that'll help you win too as well is defense. You watch a lot of players. If offense is not working, they would move their opponents around the court. So that's one way of winning and scoring points by playing a defense style, right? And typically in doubles, it's a side by side, side to side formation where shots are typically a little bit more passive. They're more placed and they're being hit from one corner to another corner, varying in speed, height, and distance. The third type of uh, style or weapon that you can use to win would be a flat or a placement style. Uh, simply, it's, it's a no lifting type of style in doubles. Imagine you're only playing the middle and front back of the court. So then you're shrinking the court, but everything is a lot more compact, a lot closer, but the sh uh, shot selections are a lot flatter. And your objective is to not lift, right? So you want to keep everything flat or you want to place it so then your opponent doesn't get a chance to attack. And last, obviously, uh, the fourth option would be shot delays and shot quality type of style. Usually this type of style is a little bit more advanced, requires a lot more skills. For instance, if you're playing this style and you're, uh, you're trying to focus more on blocking with tighter quality to slow down the game, or you're trying to 
hit a particular spot or attack to a specific area, like right in the middle, if your opponent is a left-hander or right-hander. So it requires better quality or the technique, right? You're extending your racket. And when you see your opponent do one thing, you would tend to change the direction of your shot. So then you're just, you're deceiving them to believing you're hitting one particular shot and you're varying it and changing it the last minute. Okay, so as a current coach, right, these are the four components that I typically use uh, when I see my players play. Obviously, the first thing I would like to do is to evaluate, which means to identify individual players, right, with their unique skills or specific qualities. And, you know, everybody has different types of qualities and experiences on the court, but, uh, they have strengths and challenges and it actually helps me properly categorize and place players in their respective groups or proper groups and levels during training. The second tool I like to use is obviously planning, right? Which is the design drills. After I evaluate, I try to figure out what their level is currently, what their skills are, then I tend to use the next planning phase, which is the design drill specifically uh, for them. If I'm working with this particular group, uh, should it be a shorter period, time period for them to improve or this particular group is not very uh, skillful or they're somewhat more of a novice player then their timeline for improvement would be a lot longer. So this will help me plan out my, uh, my training program as well. And typically I divide them into different levels of difficulty. So then they can slowly build up like a gradual type of learning curve. That usually helps a lot of my players, whether if it's junior or they're senior players. Okay, the next tool I would like to use, obviously now delivery. So to implement specific drills that reflect uh, the uh, skill and consistency level of your current batch of players. So for example, incorporating or utilizing or designing a drill that has more randomness or variation, right? Is great, is perfect, works well with seasoned players, meaning players that are, you know, at a higher level it's because they have shot control, they have accuracy and they have consistency. So it's not easy to always uh, figure out exactly which drill to use because it really depends on the player or the batch of players that you're working with. Lastly, to review and providing an individual assessments and making adjustments, right, to best assist, assist your uh, players for success. And typically what's effective and what's working well, you know, for that particular pair or individual or actually vice versa, what is not working and what adjustments you need to make right, during this particular uh, rally for this particular pair. So these are the adjustments. Uh, this is the period where I make adjustments for the, the batch or group of players that I work with. Okay. Okay, so now I'd like to share knowledge from past experience as a former player. Looking back, I think it would be extremely helpful if my coaches were uh, a lot more vocal, more descriptive, and provided more explanation, right? Behind the purpose of my training, my drills. Uh, because instead of just doing a particular drill, why, for instance, this example right here, why is benefiting, why is it beneficial to hit a shot away? or in between your opponents and doubles, you know, more conducive, a lot more effective than just hitting straight to them. Or when does the front person move back during doubles rotations to help the back player cover the cross court net lift, right? Why do we shift and cover different parts of the court during doubles? Why not to stand in the middle for both players? If my coach gave me a lot more unique or a descriptive explanation of the purpose behind the drills, it would have given me a lot more insight as a player 
And I would have been definitely a lot more aware and confident on the court. And number two, it would be useful if my past coaches had the knowledge about sharing a clear picture of my short term goals, short and long term goals. Sorry, let me try to see if I can move this. Oops, sorry. So, for instance, where am I at right now? You know, where are we trying to go or get to in one month, three month, six month? Obviously, uh, the course that I took uh, back in December in Lima, it was the BWF's level two certification class. And it covers great details, in great details, on an annual plan for coaches to utilize uh, for their players. For instance, what type of training and what specific intensity should the training be during specific phases of the player's annual calendar, right? I wish my, my former coaches had such knowledge or had or shared with me such detailed information. So then that way I am on the same page as you know with him in regards to the progression of my uh, badminton career and improvement. I wish my coach or past coaches would it, you know, help me set a clear objective and goals to make, you know, to help me, or sorry, I should say, if they can have a clear objective by setting goals and making sure that the goals are realistic, achievable and measurable. For instance, an example would be if I am playing a tournament in Europe and it's a 500 series, the goal is perhaps get to uh, quarterfinals, right? Or to achieve uh, finals in the 750 series, is it realistic if I'm setting that particular goal for myself based on my, my current progress? So if, if there's a you know, annual plan and the tournament you know, is everything laid, laid out in front of me and now here's how we can get there, being very strategic and being very, um, uh, being very straight forward with the objectives, it would definitely give me a lot clearer picture of where I need to be from this month or that month or right before the Olympics. Obviously adjustments will be made if the player has injuries and whatnot, but you know, these are things that you know, we plan, but we make adjustments along the way. Okay, so I would like to share some basic, uh, two basic doubles training drills, and I will show videos too as well. And the first one is simply a doubles defense, and it involves or focuses on your positioning and shifting on the court when you're defending, right? So the purpose is to demonstrate in a defensive drill how to position your body, your footing during defense. So let's watch this quick video. Hey everybody, it's Coach Howard here. Today's video is to explain how to shift and position your foot on the court when you're defending in doubles. So the typical question my students always ask me is, Coach, how do I position my foot? Should I place my right foot back or should I place my left foot back when we're defending? So the answer is, it depends. I've seen pros and players where they always keep their right foot back, regardless which side of the court they're defending on. And I've seen players where they shift on the left side of the court, they shift the left foot and right side of the court, they'll shift their right foot back. What I typically suggest would be when you're on the left side of the court, even though this is the middle, this is te technically on the left side of my court, I would shift and place my left foot back. If I am on the right side and I'm covering the straight line, I typically place my right foot back. Okay. And more importantly, you want to face your opponent. Okay. If you place your right foot forward, you're actually being more aggressive, but then you have less time to react. Right. So if you place your right foot back, then you're actually allowing more flexibility when you're defending. So it actually depends on your position when you're lifting. If you lift flat and you're in a good position, raise your racket up and place your right foot in the front. And that's okay too. Okay, great. So now we're going to move to some quick reminders and pointers for the drill before I show you the actual drill. 
I wanted to show the uh, the footing and position for this particular drill. So then that way, you know, every both players are on the same page. They're moving together and they're shifting correctly. Okay. So a quick reminder for this particular drill. If you're attacking, that means you're feeding the drill, right? You're going to smash two times straight down the line and straight to the middle. When you're defending on the corners, always lift straight. When you're covering the middle and you're defending, try to lift cross court. So then that way the drill is a lot more fluid. Okay. And let's watch the drill really quick. So this is only with two players. I'm demonstrating with another uh, player of mine, learning how to shift together and watch our footing. Right, we just shifted from here, from the right to the left. So the person covering the middle, they're pretty close to the center. And typically I suggest the player to be slightly in front of the defender. Meaning if the lift is here, the person covering the middle should be slightly in front to cut down the angle in case they cross court smash or drop. At the beginning. And after they lift cross, we shift again. And I'm covering the middle now. And as you can see, both of our right foot are slightly behind because we're covering towards the right side of the court. Sorry, apologize. Now let it run. We're shifting. We should be moving and lifting together. I lift cross and I'm covering the straights. And when my partner covers the middle, lifts cross, and we shift again. Okay. Now let's watch the drill with four players. So we're defending, and these two players are going to be attacking. So because they're feeding the drill, uh, they're going to be mainly just uh, side by side feeding to us. So it's not necessarily they're rotating, they're just trying to hit the shot to us. So we're working on lifting and shifting. So this player from the corner will always smash straight down the line the first time. And then he will smash to the middle, the second smash. Once we shift, this player will smash down the line straight, the first smash, and the second smash to the middle. Okay, let's watch the video. Straight to the side and middle, side and middle. Great. So that was the first drill. The second drill, I would like to show a basic doubles uh, formation drill, shifting from offense to defense formation. Uh, pretty much the purpose is to demonstrate the drill and how to transition from offense, which is typically front back formation, to defense, which is side by side formation for both pairs simultaneously and the pattern actually all you have to remember is you know if you're coaching this drill or utilizing this drill and you're teaching your players just tell them repeat it out loud say it out loud because if not they're going to forget <laughs> they're going to panic they're going to move up and they're going to forget what shot they're hitting so all players are hitting the same following the same sequence of shots and it is drop net block and net lift so reminders, right, for defenders, stay low, bend your knees and off your heels when you're defending. So you're not standing upright. Uh, neutral racket position or grip, tilt your racket slightly high enough so uh, it's facing the uh, net, close to the net. And defenders should always try to anticipate and wait for the drop or smash by extending your racket to hit or meet the shot halfway. Don't wait for it to get too close to you. So these are just basic pointers, okay? And also for the non-attacking, uh, sorry, non-hitting attacker, if you're attacking in this drill, 
let's say they lift to your partner, you're not smashing, then that person not smashing should move forward to cover the net. Okay. And defenders, after you block, just move forward or actually you're gonna be blocking at the net and stay at the net. Don't move back. Because if you if you block at the net, you move back and you're playing half court singles. Okay, let's watch a drill. Drop, net, lift. Drop, net, lift. Net, lift. As you can see, whoever's dropping the formation should be front back. The team that's lifting should be side by side. Sorry about that. I need to technical difficulties. I'll let the video play through and run through. Net lift. Okay, so this is going to be the last uh, video. It's actually the same drill. Once you're comfortable, you can lift a little bit faster, lift to either side, and speed up the drill as well. So let's watch this video. <laughs> Okay, keep in mind that the drill I just showed you, this drill, the pattern was drop, net, lift. So technically, once you're comfortable, you can actually uh, implement or take out the drop and put a smash in there. So, you know, if you want to make it more uh, quicker, faster, more powerful, add a smash in rather than, or just replace the drop with a smash. So then that way, but the drill is still the same. The rotation is still the same. The shifting and formation is still the same. Okay. Great. So uh, those are my two basic doubles uh, video. And right now I would like to open up the uh, floor for a Q&A session. If anybody has any questions. Thank you, Howard. So now we're moving on to our Q&A session so we invite our audience to type your questions or comments in the chat box in your opinion what do you think about the early specialization of athletes who are quite young so they can start playing doubles or mixed doubles what would you recommend uh, opinion everybody should start by playing singles because singles provide a very strong foundation in regards to your footwork. Uh, so I was playing singles roughly until about 17 or 18 years old. I played the world juniors. I played, I was a Pan Am junior champion. And not until I was 18 or 19 years old did I actually start specializing. But, you know, everybody should play singles. So then that way you can get the full dynamics of court coverage. And you're learning other skills like singles technique as well. Uh, that that'll still help you, even though you're you're planning on switching to doubles or mixed doubles. Great question. Hay alguna otra pregunta? Some people believe that a good doubles mixed team is when we have a really good net player. Do you think that's valid or not? Or what would be the role of this player? Of the female player on the court, the role has changed. In the past, it was mainly, or at least the, um, the setup 
the uh, style for mixed doubles would be, hey, the female would tend to move forward and, and to be the playmaker. But now watching Indonesian pairs, watching the Chinese pairs uh, dominate in the world class scenes now, the female needs to be able to play all roles, multiple roles. They need to have strong defense, like, and I mean strong enough to defend against male players when they smash. They need to have skills, right, to be able to properly set up or to utilize their deception uh, at the net or when they're on defense. So not just setting up and playing at the front. They need to be able to, to help out the male player on defense if needed. Or if the male player uh, feels like he has a chance to kill at the front, he's going to stay in the front. And the female player can play doubles at the back, being the back court player. So multiple roles. Great question. One more question then. What advice would you give when we have a right-handed player uh, and a left-handed player in doubles? So my mm -hmm. first doubles partner for my 2004 Olympics, Kevin, he was a left-hander. And he was actually really tall. So, and I am not very tall on the court. So uh, it was tricky, but there are strengths and weaknesses or improvements around the court, as I've mentioned. So when you have a lefty and a righty, you can, you can design in a way where, you know, you, you can play to your strengths. For instance, if I'm a righty and this is my forehand, my strength, the lefty, that's their forehand. We can actually play a lot more drives. Mm -hmm. So how do we set up front back to play more flat? So then we're both utilizing our forehand side of the court. Obviously, when we're on defense, they tend to smash to the middle. So we need to be very clear in regards to how to cover and who is hitting what shot when they're smashing to the middle. But you know, now coaches, I believe in international, uh, in different parts of uh, the country, they specifically design to incorporate a righty and a right, a right hander and a left hander on the court together, just to confuse their uh, their their opponents because it's you know it's rare but at the same time it's quite dynamic it's quite strong if you know how to use it perfect let's move on one more question what advice would you give when we play against such a doubles team with a left-handed and a right-handed player my advice would be Obviously, pick on the middle, right? When we're attacking, uh, try to hit to the backhand side. Whether if the the left if the lefty is at the back side of the court, then obviously I would tell my players when you're returning the serve, try to push more to their backhand side, which is a left backhand side if you're attacking, right? Uh, so on offense, hit more to the middle. Obviously, when you're receiving serve, try to hit in between them or hit more to the backhand side. Because when they're exposed to the backhand side, the other person that's at the front, for instance, needs to move over. And that's also their backhand side. So there's plus and minuses. They can cover both to their strength or to their weaknesses. So, yeah, great question. But also, lastly, it really depends on, on their habits, too. If, for instance the left-hander has a stronger smash, of course, you're going to want to probably move that person more, give them less time to hit or move them forward. So then the right-hander that is a little bit weaker on the smash can play the back more and vice versa. ¿Cómo podemos incorporar ejercicios para la toma de decisiones en nuestros entrenamientos de dobles? Great question. So... I think this question is, is twofold. So what I've learned in Peru, right, for my level one, level two certification, obviously, mm -hmm. you, you have to play uh, your shots, not just hitting, there needs to be a purpose. You need to have, it needs to be tactic, uh, tactical, right? So what is the purpose behind your shot? So for instance, if I'm defending, number one, the first thing I look for is where is the front person standing? Right. 
So if they're standing more towards the middle, then I have the corners I can hit to. If they're moving closer to my side, now maybe I can look for the cross court. Or if they move close to me, I hit to them, but I'm just trying to set up that one shot so then I can go cross court on them. Once they move close to me, then I go for a cross net or a mid court push. So don't just hit your shot, try to plan two or three shots ahead. And one way to do so is to incorporate, well, the first phase I would say is when you're doing a defense drill, for instance, they're smashing to the player. The player has two options, block straight or drive to the middle, okay, past the front person. Once you get that first stage yeah. uh, in, then now, now you can incorporate when you block straight, the second option would be, should I go mid-court or should I go cross-court, depending on where the front person is standing? So now you're actually applying and hitting with purpose. You're not just hitting. If they're standing a certain way, hit to another corner to make them move. So that'll help you plan ahead and see the bigger picture. I'm not just defending. I'm defending to confuse them. I'm defending to move them. I'm defending to set them up so I can hit to a different corner or a different side. Okay, so who has been your favorite or most compatible doubles partner and why? Okay, so I've competed in three Olympics. I've had different partners and obviously, uh, so one of the uh, uh, funny but true reply or answer I give a lot of my students is, they're like, hey, what does it take to become a world champion? And I'm like, well, it's very simple. You partner another world champion. You partner an Olympic champion, and his name is Tony Gunawan, right? So yes, it's you know it's actually yeah, just yeah. the game, right? It's not that easy, but uh, everybody, every partner has different dynamics. I've learned a lot from all different partners. My first partner, he was a left-hander, so then that helped me situate and think whether if I'm partnering a left-hander or if I'm playing against a right-hander and a left-hander pair. So I've learned a lot tremendously from my first uh, partner. His name is Kevin. My second partner, Bob, you know, quite dynamic because he had mentioned, hey, look, Howard, can you play more front game, right? And for me, I'm like, wow, I'm, I always view myself as the back player. But then it helped me improve my game because now I can actually – uh, develop my skills at the front. So he helped me improve and took my game to another level. So then that way I'm not one style. I'm not, you know, one angle, you know, so he's helping me become a more well-rounded player. So I can play the front. I can learn how to cut off. And obviously my last Olympics, Tony, uh, we played and Tony actually, he was so dynamic on the court meaning he was able to show me how to win right and he was able to teach me how to win so many times coaches will tell you what to do but it's amazing to have someone tell you what to do and show you how it's done on the court so that gave me that opened up like the seventh dimension in this world to me because you know he is walking the walk and talking the talk he's preaching and he is showing you he's he's doing everything so all three partners, I've learned a lot. And yeah, it's dynamic because they all teach me and help me improve my game. All right. So thank you very much. Unfortunately, we've run out of time and we have to uh, close this program. Howard, thank you so much for joining us today in this incredible talk. I hope to see you soon, very again, very, uh, again, very soon. Gracias. Yeah, thank you again for inviting me to be here. And thank you, everybody, again for uh, attending the session. Have a great rest of your week. We encourage you to write to us and propose topics you are interested in through the chat box. We would like to invite you to check out Badminton Panam's YouTube channel as well, where you will be able to see this and other conferences we have held in the past. Before we finish today's webinar, I'd like to greet 
our friends around the world. I'm going to mention some of them now. We have Julie and Sebastian from Argentina. We also have Brigida from Bolivia, Vladimir from Brazil. So on behalf of Badminton Panam, thank you for your participation. We hope you like this session. Greetings, everyone. Take care and see you soon. Have a good day. Goodbye.